Welcome to the Silver River Terrace channel. Uh, we wanted to talk a little bit today about what to do before you start weaving. First things first, take a picture of the old seat. But don't necessarily follow the old seat or sizing or the pattern. In this particular chair, we have a perfectly suitable seat that probably used a size or two too large. You can see it is very cramped in here. Um, the diagonals are a little wavy. And if you had gone down a size, it would have been a lot easier to weave, and you would have had just as sturdy of a seat. Pattern-wise, we have a lot of Vs on the front instead of Xs. This strand could have gone under the last bit and into this hole here. That might be a little too much for <laughs> this video, but the patterns here could be different. The pattern on the edge, similarly. Uh, the other thing is, is on both the front and the back, there's a lot of space here. And lastly, the binder here is kind of all over the place. It's twisted up towards me on that one, and then twisted towards the camera there. It does take a little extra effort to get the binder to lay flat. And I do want to say that this is a perfectly suitable seat uh, that just, you know, over time started to get. Once the binder is off, you want to cut the seat out and being very careful not to cut the wood. I'm going about an inch to a half inch on the inside of the chair frame. Um, here in the corners, there'll be some strands that are still connected. You want to cut those up. A lot of times you can just break them. Now you can take the ends and push down and pull from underneath. There you go. So it's a combination of pushing down and then pulling. So you may find it easier to work from the bottom and pull the loops while pushing from underneath. This material is pretty big and the holes are pretty small, so they're packed. The idea here is to Try not to mar the seat underneath. Keep working at it. Sometimes it takes a little longer than you think it should. And you can work from the bottom, or I really find it easier to work from the top and push and pull at the same time. Um, giving it a quick wipe. So we've taken all the old material off, and we're about to do some rasping here. Use the rough edge and knock the bulk of the material off, and then use the fine tooth edge to kind of round things over. You're not trying to make a big bevel. You're just taking some of that sharp. I really like this four-way rasp that has a rounded side as well as a straight side and then a coarse and a fine cut cutting teeth. Um, for a round chair, I'm going to use the round side and go. When you're rasping along the edge, be extra specially careful with any, you know, these demi arms. You don't want to hit those with a rasp. And sometimes it's better to come from underneath. Sometimes it's easier to come from up on top. It just depends on the chair. After you're done using the rasp, it's probably a good idea to go back with some fine sandpaper and clean everything up. The sandpaper on its own usually isn't enough to roll that edge over. So once you've got all the material removed, uh, it's time to address any structural issues. Sometimes there's cracking in between the holes, or if you have loose joints, or if you're going to do any refinishing, now's the time. This chair is in good structural repair, so what I want to do is seal this raw wood that we've opened up with the rasp. And so we use a combination orange oil and beeswax, and we're just rubbing this on with little bit of fine steel wool. Uh, usually what happens is that I'll start and then you end up oiling the entire chair and your chair will be happier for it. So you let the oil uh, sit for a minute. 
it's going to do its thing, and then wiping off any excess with a t-shirt cloth. Once your chair is prepped, uh, sizing is the next thing, and sizing is very important. The size of the material varies by a quarter of a millimeter, and it does make all the difference in the world. There are times when you'll have up to eight strands going through a hole, and if your material is a little too large, that's going to make that pretty difficult to make happen. So most chair caning reference books have a sizing chart of some sort, or you can work with your supplier. Uh, regardless, you're going to need a few measurements in order to determine what size cane you're going to use for your project. First off, we want to count the number of holes in six inches. 12. And measure that in a few different spots around the chair because not all the holes are evenly spaced. Note about how many holes are in 6 inches. And next you want to measure the size of the holes themselves. Do that in a few different spots around the chair. And also you want to measure the distance between the holes. You would measure from right side to right side of the hole or left side to left side of the hole. A lot of the references are going to tell you center to center, but it's a lot easier to do that from one side of the hole to the other. So in this case, I'm going from this side of the hole to this side of the hole. And the measurement is just over a half inch, just a smidge over and take that measurement in a few different spots. So these measurements matter a lot, and there's a reason that the sizing chart goes to the 16th or even a 32nd sometimes. Saying that something's about a quarter of an inch doesn't help very much when you're trying to size material that varies by a quarter of a millimeter. Rarely do the measurements on a chair line up perfectly with the sizing chart. You have to make an educated guess. Most of the time, especially on round chairs, we're going to jump a size smaller rather than a size larger if there's a choice to be made. Thanks for watching the Silver River Chairs channel. We hope this has been helpful. Please take some time and watch some of our other helpful videos as well. Um, you can visit us at www.silverriverchairs.com or on Instagram at Silver River Chairs.